I use my sketchbook to explore different shapes and combinations and colours and all sorts of things, marks and uh, color, combinations of collage and paint and um, looking through the pages I can see um, a kind of repetition of shapes that keep emerging in my work and this is really interesting because um, these are obviously shapes that I naturally go to and that become sort of my um, visual vocabulary in a way um, and so in a sketchbook like this it's really good it's really good to have one place where you can wander through and look for these um, this vocabulary emerging through your work and uh, just looking through these here I can see similar shapes and things that I've gone to and used in different ways but they still keep appearing in my work and um, it's just an interesting thing to be aware of um, when I'm doing my work. A lot of these shapes have actually come from stencils and um, before I got stencils made I made my own shapes with paper and I'll show you how I, here they are, um, so this is what I had originally. I had just buy an old book with large pages and I would make these shapes and cut them out but they've sort of thin paper and they became quite sort of crumpled and hard to keep together. Then I scaled up to a sort of a heavier duty paper and these are some of my uh, shapes that I have made and now of course I'm using these um, stencils that are made with plastic mylar and I can just use them over and over again. I get them from Stencil Girl products and uh, you can buy these sheets um, of my shapes if you want and um, use them in your work. And I'm not bothered by um, other people using my shapes because I just think we all use them in different ways and just as um, I have built up my own visual vocabulary by re repeating shapes that I like, um, you will do the same thing with yours. But um, having these uh, shapes on hand in this plastic, this durable plastic, is really, um, I, I really like it. And I like using the whole sheets as well. I've got large sheets like this and um, these are great for my larger paintings because the shapes are much bigger and um, you can see that one there is quite a large one you just press them out they come in a sheet and you just uh, press them out and then you have a frame and then you have this this the actual shapes so here we go I'm going to start another one now and using the frame I just bought a packet of I think they're makeup sponges used to put your foundation on and these are great because they're really quite dense they're quite a dense sponge and um, so I got a packet of them from a two dollar shop and I just use these and just uh, stencil on these shapes and then over the top I can come in loosely with some transparent paint and just build up layers of transparent paint, some of the paint is a bit thicker in places than others, light and dark, warm and cool, and just building these layers of shapes. Because what I'm really loving to try and achieve in my work at the moment is a combination of looseness and sort of sharp controlled edges. But I don't want the edges to be too, um, I want there to be a looseness about them as well, but in combination with the with the sort of the defined edge and the looseness of the paint or the ink or whatever I'm using, um, this is the sort of um, effect that I'm after. And these shapes that I'm using, you know, you can just use a part of them and you can extend them and make make them just become part of a much larger shape. It's it's a really uh, I just think they're quite a a quick way of having a great repertoire of shapes that you can use and there's no end to the possibilities of how you can use them really. Um, here I'm just sort of bringing the paint on that I've used thickly in a transparent film as well just to add contrast. And then once the paint is dry just sort of 
drawing into it. I like to draw around the shape so that you get a linear um, you get a linear shape as well as a um, painted shape. And here I'm going to add some ink and this is a lovely way of just um, bringing in some really vibrant colour. And you can see the looseness against those sharp edges. That's the sort of effect that I'm really loving to try and achieve in my work at the moment. And it's done by just building up layer upon layer um, and then finding those shapes and defining them more. So bringing the frame in again, I can find some more hard edges. And here you can see all the layers being built up. Edges that can be defined and really soft edges as well as hard edges. And then here I'm sort of quietening down areas so that I can see some of those hard edges and find these shapes that I want to highlight in the, in the painting. Bringing in some lines. These lines are things that I love to use in my work as well. They're part of my visual vocabulary, I think. And then I love these loose marks. Putting a dark paint on a splodge and then spreading it around with that colour shaper really gives lovely effects. And so now what I'm doing, having found these shapes, I'm with that turquoise, I'm just bringing in some thicker paint and um, putting it up next to that um, brownie colour and sort of defining some edges and making these extra little shapes in the painting. And then of course I like to add letters and words into my work as well. More line. More writing. And here are some more of these sort of thicker painted definition shapes that just bring the thing together. Almost like punctuation to a sentence really. There, that's the final thing. So as you can see, you can use these stencils by building up lots of lovely layers of looseness and then making your own shapes from them. And I don't think any two paintings would ever be the same. But they're a great way to add shapes and find your own visual language.